Thanks for staying with us. Referencing an article on African women in medias, the insidious ways white versions of beauty are foisted on black women slip into the subconscious, thereby urging women to chase unattainable notions of beauty that veer off reality. The boom and boon enjoyed by the bleaching and hair relaxing cream industry in Africa is a testimony to this. Statistics um, compiled by the World Health Organization in 2011 revealed that 40% of African women bleach their skin. Indeed, beauty standards have changed throughout the centuries, and while beauty is a function of consensus, to determine that something possesses beauty, it must align with socially accepted criteria for beauty. A large percentage of the standard of beauty in Nigeria today has changed because of Western influence, and uh, considering the volume of FX that goes into importing these beauty items, do you think the government should ban the importation of human hair, bleaching cream, and other beauty products to cure Nigeria's chronic inferiority complex? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 018038 Tweet at us at Waste Show Africa One with the hashtag Waste Show. So, ladies, this topic, I don't know if I should call it gaslighting. <laughs> I don't know if I should call it lack of imagination. I don't know if somebody in here thinks the man is talking sense, but clearly that person is not me. Um, there's so many things wrong with this statement, mm. with, with the call to ban human hair, right? Not from the perspective that um, it's... I mean, he's coming at it from an FX perspective, and I'm like, there's so many things we could count that we're spending FX on today, yeah. that we all know collectively mm. that we should not be spending FX on. Mm. We took a story, um, I think it was last week, yeah. about us not removing the subsidy. And we were going to leave it for the next government to come and take the decision. Something that we have clearly shown that we can't afford and we continue to spend on um, and then here's this person who I just think is looking for headlines, comes and makes this completely ludicrous suggestion. Now, no doubt, all across the world, wherever there are, you know, melanin pigmented people, whether you're brown, you're black, we know that people, um, and it's not unique to Nigeria, it's not unique to Africa, like I said, wherever we are, um, you know, have this 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 high, um, higher pigmentation there is a cultural leaning towards being lighter mm. right so people believe that being lighter is more aesthetically pleasing it's more beautiful again that is a personal preference yeah. i mean i have personally never understood why anybody would want to bleach i think you're beautiful whatever skin tone and shade that you are but clearly there's a strong cultural message around this around people wanting to bleach and we've seen over the, the years, how people have gone to the extreme with bleaching. And, you know, what I found most annoying about this is I think that currently we are at a time when more Nigerian women yeah. are appreciating their natural beauty. Yeah. We've had a consistent, at least in the last, I'd like to say up to 10 years, We've had a move to natural beauty. We've had women, a lot more women with their natural hair, yeah. a lot more women, you know, just the fact that we appreciate, we value our beauty. We're mm -hmm. not saying that we're not beautiful. Um, and to think that a man can sit somewhere and say, you know what, um, what you want to do is take away my choice, mm. right? So mm. I should look, so I, it's not okay to look like the white construct, mm. but I should look like your construct, which is that I should be natural. And, and again, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, anybody that knows me knows that I am a fan of my natural hair. I'm not, I'm not a fan of wigs. I, I, sh I wear them, but I struggle when I wear them. I like to, to do my own hair. But the fact is I have a choice. And then somebody wakes up and says, today's problem is the fact that we are spending FX, which, by the way, I was trying to find out um, what was or still on the list in which you can actually get funds from the government. I mean, trying to get funds today is easier to pass a camel through the eye of a needle mm. than to actually get your hands on Forex. So to come and make this sort of claim 
in my mind, I'm thinking, do you know how many things we import? We mm. import stockfish. I mean, there's just so many, so things, many things that we're spending money on that if we really want to pick on the list, um, this one is so far down. I mean, this is not something that everybody can afford. It's a very small microcosm of people within the country that can actually afford this particular product. And somebody wakes up and says, you know what, so this is the problem. But I think I've said enough. <laughs> so I'm going to come to you, Jennifer. <laughs> what are your thoughts? on this wonderful <laughs> headline that we have seen today. So I've, I've seen, I've seen um, this topic, it is always recycled. It's like it comes every year or maybe every quarter, people are always talking about human hair. I mean, I get that um, buying human hair this is actually very expensive. And that's the part I don't like or appreciate because it's costing an arm and a leg. So you're probably spending, um, what, between 200 to 500 and that's, they will still tell you, oh, that's just the manageable or the okay mm -hmm. wigs. And then I've seen hairs that go for about one million. But those who can afford it, can afford it. And when I see topics like this, it always comes from a place of um, mockery. Mm -hmm. It's never, you, you say, okay, I want you to appreciate your beauty. I want you to appreciate your hair, your natural state and all of that. But the truth is, if we actually sit you down and fully understand your motive... It's not about empowerment. Mm -hmm. You just want to put mm. people in a bottle that suits your own narrative. Exactly. Oh, because I like it this way, then you should conform to it. And these days, like you said, like I 100% agree with everything that you said because this is a lot more people are appreciating their skin color. People are appreciating their hair. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is my hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so I love wigs. I, I love wigs. Mm -hmm. If I if I have so much money and there's a new wig I'm seeing that looks very beautiful, hmm, of I will buy it. Who doesn't want to have a different look every I once I worked for my money. I will buy it. There are people that are not comfortable with their yeah. natural hair and their natural look. That's and then that's problem. fine. That's a different topic. I, I, that, that's totally okay. I know before my hair got to this point, my hair has always been really short. So I've always cut... Um, my hair wasn't growing properly, mm. so I would always wear wigs. I would always do. Then when sew-in was really the in thing before we um, transformed or transitioned into proper wigs, I would do sew-in back to back. Once I'm losing it, mm. I'm doing another one. But later I was like, okay, maybe I should go natural and see if my hair will grow longer. Mm -hmm. But I found out that I couldn't style my hair properly, and it was taking me um, a longer time to style my hair to go out. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to relax it. Mm -hmm. And whatever happens to the hair happens. But pending when it grows, I'm going to enjoy my wig. And even mm -hmm. now that my natural hair is doing so well, I still love my wigs. I always want to wear my wigs because it's my money. It makes me look beautiful. My natural hair also makes me look beautiful. And then even when you talk about skin, a lot more people are actually going out these days without makeup. Yep. And that's because one of the reasons why people were even wearing makeup to start with was because a lot of people had bad skin. Mm -hmm. So now there has been a lot of education on how to take care of your skin, on how to have healthy skin and move from acne prone or where you have a lot of pimples on your face to a smooth skin. And it's, it's a journey. People go years, two years, three years to achieve all of these. And then you come out to just belittle it and just <laughs> make it seem like it's a small fit. But then that's for you. So for those people who appreciate themselves, I don't think anyone should detect um, what you should wear on your head. If mm. you want to wear a wig that costs you two million and you can afford it, please go right ahead and do it and enjoy it and have fun while you're doing it. So, Norma, I want to come to you because I think amongst the four of us, you're the experts on this table um, around how people comport themselves, how they present themselves. Um, and I, I just want to talk about, so yes, we, we must agree that the concept or the consensus around beauty is constantly evolving just like culture. So, mm. you know, like Jennifer just said, at one point it was sew-ins, now it's wigs, we don't know what it will be tomorrow. But in the same guys, right, we're looking at people who have healthy skin goals, who have, I mean, we're much more aware about how, how healthy hair should be um, and making sure that whatever you have underneath your wig or, or whatever is as healthy as the hair that you are, you know, putting mm. on your head. So for you, do you agree with this concept that us having these options 
means that we have an inferiority complex? Uh, I totally agree uh, with you, Uti, that the narrative is changing in the times that we're in. In fact, with the new generation, it, you don't even know what to expect. They're the ones taking ownership of everything. They don't have to. It's cleaner uh, looks that people are going for now, more natural looks. And um, for you to come and make a blanket statement, I think Reno has... Uh, continues to come up with ingenious ways to continue to be uh, in the spotlight when it comes to social media. So while he might have some points about the fact that we spend a lot of money uh, towards the purchase of these wigs and all, I totally agree with uh, Jennifer and even some comments that you made earlier that people still have a choice. And I don't think that this is something that is unique to Africa alone or to Nigeria. We have people in Asia who are trying to be lighter every single day. In fact, if you check history or if you check records, you find out that Asian women are spending more and more on being able to lighten their skin. So it's not unique to the African context. And I agree with Jennifer saying that you, you because you want to teach them self-image, all of that, but I don't think that the, the motives that Reno is coming with are actually genuine. Because if they were genuine, then you, were, you would not be ordering the federal government to do one thing or the other. You yeah. would come from a place of suggestion that there's a problem. There's a problem in the country where people are paying more attention to this and that. And you think that it's, 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 it's drawing attention to the wrong things that we should learn to appreciate. So the focus should not have been on banning. The focus should have been on teaching people to appreciate themselves, coming up with campaigns that continue to help people make informed decisions mm -hmm. and not you imposing your ideology of what beauty is in the lives of citizens. They have a right to decide what beauty means to them. And beauty means different things to, uh, to different people. But some people, they would love to have their natural hair. But like Jennifer, they have struggled with hair issues and they cannot have it. I tried to go natural several years ago. Unfortunately, it wasn't working for me. And then I had to relax my hair, but I don't do it. I'm locked, one of the lucky ones that has the type of hair that when you relax, you can stay up to six months before you put in relaxer again. Uh -huh. But it's not everyone that is uh, fortunate to have such texture of hair. And then when you, you, you want to focus on that, are those really the only issues that we have to deal with in Nigeria? Who are the people that are purchasing these uh, wigs? A lot of people who are purchasing the wigs are, uh, are not that either middle income earners who would actually save to buy these wigs. I can imagine how many times or installments that Jenny had to do to be able to obtain a new a uh, uh, style of wig or the other if it's the human hair type. So you can imagine a lot of people who plan themselves and say, okay, I'm going to be budgeting for this particular, and then they get it. While some others have to ask for money here and there. So who are the people that are purchasing these wigs? If you check again, majority of the purchasers are even the men themselves. Purchasing it for the people that they want uh -huh. to look in a certain way. Uh -huh. So what is he talking about? Uh -huh. They are the same people who are championing this cause. Yeah. Because it could not have gained the popularity that it had if somebody was not trying to impress someone in the first place. Uh -huh. So I think that these are just misplaced uh, 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 policies that he's trying to do because there are more critical issues that we need to take into cognizance, like you had mentioned earlier, yeah. um, Uti. And then I also don't want to take away because we, it's very easy for us to focus on 
oh, the fact that human hair is expensive and this and that is happening and a lot of people are trying to change their image to, to be something else and to, to forget that there are benefits to different things. There are people who have genuine medical situations mm -hmm. that wigs have actually helped. People, people that people have alopecia and things like that, yeah. There are people who suffer cancer. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, there are people who suffer alopecia uh, and things like that. And these things have actually helped them to recreate or to, uh, to help them to restore their sense of self-image. Yeah. So even though he's trying to preach that, oh, that we should, uh, it's because of lack of self-image. It's not, that's a blanket statement. Mm. And I don't think that he did some level of, of research to come up with these uh uh, accusations that he's come up with. Yeah. So it, it's just cheap talk, if you ask me. And I, I, I need him to, you know, really tone <laughs> a lot of these things down because it's getting very yeah. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, so I think um, we'll take a quick break. Um, and when we come back, Isi will come to you. Please stay with us. If you've just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out and we're discussing the topic, should the government ban the importation of human hair? Please let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 0818 Tweet at us at WayshowAfrica1 with the hashtag Wayshow. Of course, today's Thursday, so our phone, now, phone lines are now open um, and you can call us on... 0702 I think I'm two days ahead in the week. I said it's Thursday. Today is Tuesday. <laughs> uh, but our phone lines are open and we really love you to join the conversation. So, Issy, um, part of the reason why um, Reno has made this comment, he says it's due to the FX issues that the sale of hair, the amount of money we're spending on the sale of hair, could um, has negative impact on our foreign um, reserve, um, our foreign exchange reserves. Now, uh, when we think about, like I said earlier, what we're spending um, our FX on as a nation, right, and how countries typically make money or earn FX, you're either doing it by export, you're doing it by um, uh, direct foreign direct investment. There's so many things that need to be done or can be done to improve our current situation in terms of FX. And I mean, it's, it's unimaginative you know, ideas like this that really keep us where we are because people are not being creative about the ways in which we can earn money. What are your thoughts around his view that this is killing our FX reserves? Hmm. <laughs> First, I would totally disagree with him. I was totally disagree with him in the context that when I actually did my research, I discovered that we in Africa, basically, we, according to Euro Monitor, we have about, Africans have about 7 billion annually coming in based on importation or exportations of this, of, um, of wigs, basically, or human uh, extensions. So I totally disagree with him in this context. However, let's look at the, the I, I also looked at it from different uh, perspectives, which has to do with the fact that we, I looked at the negatives or the cones of what um, importing human hair would do to our economy. And I realized that nothing, if anything, it is actually boosting the economy based on the fact that we have entrepreneurs who are actually using this to make a daily income in our society daily, especially in a situation where we do not have jobs. So small business owners use this to make uh, their living. We have people who make wigs. We have people who actually... Um, uh, working in the small shops basically and they sit down and they use their, they take their time buy the extensions and make wigs for people who need the wigs i looked at it again from another perspective which had to do with the economical perspective the physical perspective and the social perspective and i realized that economically the entrepreneurs need 
the um, boost for Rust to be able to bring in the monies. So there is no, there is just nothing. There is no problem with them bringing in or importing the um, human hair. I looked at it again globally. Globally, even foreigners, the whites, are also buying extensions for their hair. So. In every aspect, we have individuals who are living abroad, Nigerians in diaspora, buying wigs from Nigeria because it's cheaper and taking it abroad for them to be able to afford it because they wouldn't be able to buy in the amount or the, the um, uh, what's it called, the price that they're supposed to buy it over there due to exchange rates again. So they would rather come back to Nigeria and buy it here. Again, we also have another fact that um, economically, it boosts the cosmetic industry, basically. We are saying that, yes, women are looking natural. But again, women are also trying to enhance their beauty, ensure that they are looking up to par wherever they, you know, they want to stand out. So, yes, it does um, um, boost the economic uh, industry in Nigeria as well as abroad, because we also have local products that are being made in Nigeria as well. Again, I, I looked at it physically. Now let's look at it from the physical point of view. Women, uh, they want to look good. According to uh, a lady called Michaela, who had an interview in uh, CNN, she said that black, the women who are, the black women love to look good especially during the COVID, they, they want their hair to be nice, neat, and at all times. So they wouldn't mind to go the extra mile. Some people have the opinion that the Blacks did somewhere or somewhere in between decided to, you know, change their identity that they do not want to, they do not want to own who they are by not looking natural, uh, being Black or as, you know, keeping the melanin there. But, Again, the women are actually stepping out of their comfort zone to enhance their look. And this is also boosting their confidence, whether we like it or not. The other day we talked about BBL, uh, that's body enhancement and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Again, it's all part of it. So if we're looking at it from the perspective of women who want to fix their hair socially or physically, they want to, you know, we have harsher conditions, especially during the Hamatan, where women tend to cover their hair because the weather is harsher on their hair. So they take those wigs to cover their hair. You see, I'm just going to interrupt you there. Um, we have a yes. call. We have Loma from um, Abia. Okay. Good evening, Loma. Thanks for calling in. Good evening. <laughs> um, uh, as I don't watch the topic, I start laughing. <laughs> I don't think um, the government should punish. If you somebody have money to invest, so what? Continue. But I have to. But I want us to commit something. That is not who I am. I think it's who I am. Because that is not the one that God who created heaven and earth created the people. But I want to tell you. My eye, at this point, I told my wife, uh, Madam, after one woman one day in a bus told his, I told his driver, please, driver, where is the driver here? My hair has, has fallen off. We thought that it is her original hair uh, 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 cut off. It was weak that fell off from the bus. So she now started telling me, wait, So from that day, I hated me. You hear me? So I, I told my wife, please, I don't like it with as a person. So she now decided to perform with me and make her own way in another style, which is so beautiful. So look at your own hair, very beautiful. So these people that have money want to import, let them continue. But I, as a person, I don't like I don't want to go to money. Let, them, let people continue. Because there are people that make money from it, it's a business for some people. But I, as a person, I don't like it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Loma, for that perspective. Um, and when he was talking about the hair flying off on the bus, 
I don't see how that is any different from a hat flying off somebody's head. But, um, you know, perspectives are everything. And I liked a lot of what Isi said before the, the call came through, looking at the economic aspect yeah. of it and how much of an economy it's driving. It's driving the hair industry. It's driving the beauty industry. It's driving, I mean, the weddings. I, that, that, I mean, it's just a plethora of people who are earning income. And she also touched on a very interesting thing um, that I was hoping that we would talk about, is the fact that the Nigerian entrepreneurs, the small businesses that are truly driving the economy, have created good enough products, mm. right, that they are actually exporting. So if you are on any of the social media platforms where these, these um, wigs are being sold, you see people regularly chatting from the diaspora going, yeah. I want to buy this, do you ship internationally? Yeah. And that in itself is a source of a foreign exchange. Yeah. So mm -hmm. thank you, Isi, for, for raising that point because mm -hmm. uh, it's so valid because he goes on to talk about the impact, right, of people who have uh, children who have lost parents and... Um, um, uh, the, the impact of, of the actual bleaching creams on our skins, on our hair. These are all valid things. And I don't think that there's any woman that is unaware of it. I think people who still choose to bleach their skin today, they know all the risks, yeah. but they still choose to take it. What was interesting for me was I actually would like to ask him what car he drives. Perhaps he drives an <laughs> Ineson or he drives, I think the other one that's made in Nigeria is a JAC, I think. Yeah. Perhaps he drives one of those cars because the imported cars cost way more than the hair, and they kill way more people. So, excuse me, Mr. Omokri, I would just like to know what car he drives. Because, at this point, you can't come for me and I won't come for you. The women of Nigeria... <laughs> Do you know I actually thought about... I actually mm -hmm. talked about... Um, about cars, mm -hmm. especially when um, Loman was, was speaking, because I'm like, you import cars, and the ROI for cars compared to that of human hair, it's not the same thing. Now, as far as I'm concerned, having a car is a liability, because as time goes, in the next two, three years, the, the, the value of that car depreciates. You can't, you can't sell that car for the same price that you bought it. And secondly, you have situations where you have to repair the car. You're having issues with the car, especially if you buy the car as uh, maybe um, second hand. But one thing I've noticed about human hair is I have wigs that have lasted me for six years. There are people who I think I, I met this lady at work and I saw her hair. It looked so brand new. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I like the bounce on your wig. Where did you get it from? She said, to be honest, that the lady she bought it from has relocated abroad. I'm like, oh, wow. Mm. Then when did you get it? She told me she got it 10 years ago. Wow. See, if you see that wig, it looks like she bought it last month. Mm -hmm. And I was so shocked. And she said, oh, that she actually has just two. So she just Switches, alternates yeah. between both of them that she didn't see the need. Because since the lady left, she doesn't trust any other person to give her very good hair or very mm. good wig. And then that's one pro I know for wigs. Yeah, but I mean, so I might not sustainability see. Yeah, it's, thing it's sustainable. because back in the day when we used to do our hair with just the pure synthetic, the braiding hair, mm -hmm. right? Thing you you finish it and you throw, yeah, it, you away. throw it away. And I, I don't believe these are you know bio biodegradable material. So even from an environmental perspective, right? We've even done a lot there because these hairs are you reusable. You get good value hair, and you can get a lot of wear from it. And when you think about it, right? Ten years where perhaps you bought it for 150000 Over 10 years, think how much you've saved in different hairstyles, mm -hmm. in different things where you're now saving money. I mean, we could go on and on about the pluses of us being able to use wigs. I, the, the bit, I think I'll probably just come back to Norma quickly on this um, because she talked about alopecia. The fact that actually doing our natural hair places tension on our hairlines. Yeah. So, I mean, yes. take me, for example. I do everything I can not to place tension on my hairline, but I was born with this unique hairline. I have a widow's peak that comes all the way down here. And I, I've never had hair, you know, even as a child, I used to have, my mother used to cut my hair, I used to have low cut. I still didn't have hair in front. So I've always been very aware of protecting my hairline. But the fact that you're constantly putting tension, doing these um, weaving styles yeah, and right. things that he's suggesting, mm. right, also puts tension on your hair. So I think, Noma, I'll just come to you to hear your thoughts around the impact of natural hairstyles that they can have on their hair if it's not properly handled. Absolutely, Uti. I think um, 
it's uh, something that we need to pay attention to. I remember back in the days when we were young, in Kaduna, that we used to go to a place where we would, uh, our hair would be made. And it, uh, so sometimes after those experiences, I feel for days that I can't even sleep because of how much tension uh, on, on, on my hair or on my uh, scalp, per se. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I think, like I said earlier, that it's not something that Reno himself may have thought through uh, completely. He just thought it was a bright idea to throw out there, maybe for his own reasons, to, to continue to bring uh, traction to himself or whatever, or for whatever reason. But I think that if these are still personal choices that people have to make, people have individual uh, scalp challenges. Some people have uh, tough hair, very sensitive scalp. Some people have normal scalp, but they don't have a, a, a healthy hair. So it's not something that you want to uh, decide for each person. Each person knows their hair. And I, I like the fact that EC had mentioned that through the advice of her hairstylist, she came up with the best possible solution, which is what she has on her hair. I've got a, a, a hairstylist too who has also uh, advised me on the different things that I need to do. There was a time my hair started falling off and I was asking him, oh, what's going on? And he says, oh, the, 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 the shampoo that I'm using, I should not use the shampoo that comes with the relaxer because it's a, a, neutralized, a neutralizing shampoo. I didn't have that knowledge because I, was, I wasn't an expert in that regard. But with his advice, I stopped using, you know, after you wash that initial wash, then you just use your not your normal shampoos. And that helps my hair to, to come back to its healthy form. So I think the choices are still left to the people. This is not something that is a, 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 a challenge or is big. Uh, a challenge or unique to Nigeria or Africa alone. This is a global issue. People have issues and challenges with their hair and are constantly making decisions in that regard. No amount of ban or no amount of uh, uh, a stop can stop people from actually making decisions for their hair. If you put a ban, they're going to find a way around it. I think it's something that we need to be more intentional with our focus. Okay, how can we use this to channel in the right direction? Or if we feel that this is affecting people's self-esteem, then why not we come up with campaigns that continue to remind people of uh, um, uh, to choose very, very intelligently, their own make their own choices for what beauty uh, means to them. These are how uh, uh, companies come up with different campaigns if they want to sell a narrative or something. Yes, I know that the Western influence has been there over the years, but I want to say, like it's, uh, Uti had mentioned, that people are proudly, the new generation, they are proudly taking ownership of the choices that they are making in terms of sustainability. They are the ones asking questions. If you give them creams and hair textures, they're asking you, what's the process? You know, they're asking questions that normally you would not have asked before now. So people are becoming more conscious of their choices and they are making it more decisively. So uh, I, I, I just believe that this is something that it's not for the government to decide for the citizens. It's something that the citizens themselves will decide how they want to carry themselves, what their, their, their vision of self-image mm. is. Yeah, I think you, you're absolutely spot on, Norma. Everybody needs to define for themselves what their beauty means to them, um, where their confidence is centered, where their self-esteem. I mean, we expect and we hope that people have a healthy view of themselves and they know that they're beautiful in whatever skin, um, you know, skin color, skin tone, whatever type of hair that they have. We hope that, you know, people believe in themselves um, and that these mm -hmm. things are just done from an aesthetic perspective. I want to look different. I have choices. I have options. Um, and just to give us some variety in our life, because, of course, variety is the spice of life. Um, thank you, ladies. I've 
thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I mean, it's giving me such a boost of energy <laughs> that I needed. Um, I really enjoyed uh, having the conversation with you all. So thank you, Norma. Thank you, Issy. Uh, thank you to Jennifer in studio. And thank you to our viewers. We hope you enjoyed the conversation. Before we go, do ensure you follow us on Instagram at Wayshow Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and most importantly, follow all our social media engagements. Remember to like, share, comment, and invite your friends and family to watch us and follow us. If you missed today's quote again, here it is. Um, European standards of beauty are something that plague the entire world. The idea that darker skin is not beautiful, that light skin is the key to success and love. Africa is certainly no exception, and that's by Lupita Inyongo. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Have a good evening.